Hey guys. Previously in Blender, it's been very hard to have stylizable features, like shadow tinting and all that stuff, while also being able to have easily adjustable stylized colored lights. Not anymore. Introducing the stylized point lights update. This is yet another awesome way to light your models with this add-on. So whether you have the free or pro version, make sure to update and try this out because it's going to be a ton of fun. So let's get into it. So to start things off, I just have my monkey and my trusty sunlight right here. Let's add a new material. Let's also add a stylized 3D lining main effect. Keep in mind you need this effect added in order to play around with the stylized point light feature. I'm going to set this to linear for now because I just want regular lighting, not anime style. Now it's really easy to add this effect. All you have to do is go to stylized point light and click add effect. You'll notice it adds right here, a sass point light group number one light object. And we get this menu here that pops up where we can adjust all the features of our light. And if we move it into place like this, I'm just going to increase the brightness a little bit. You can change the spreading, sharpness. There's this occlude from dark areas feature, which I'll talk about later. Saturation and hue, and I'll increase the power for now to make it brighter. Now keep in mind guys, it's going to inherit whatever the shading style is on your stylized like dynamic effect. So if I set this to the painterly effect, you can see now this point light will basically follow that. I'm going to adjust the strokes on this as well, so it looks a bit better and nicer. And yeah, so you can see now we have this point light that we can just adjust the color of as well, so easily. Now with these point lights, you can hit shift D to duplicate them if you want, and have yet another one. And just move it wherever you want. If you want it to be in the back here, that's totally cool. But I'll just delete that for now. Alright guys, so now I have two more monkeys here, but you can notice that our point light isn't affecting them, or at least the color of the light isn't. Now it's really easy, all you have to do is just select whatever objects you want to have the stylized point light on, click add effect, and you can see, for all the objects we selected now, it's going to be affected properly by both of the color and the strength and all of their features in the point light effect. You can adjust the color and anything to your liking that you want. Now let's say we had another object that we wanted to be affected by this light. Really easy. All we have to do is go and add the effect, and it'll now be linked to the stylized point light group number one. So just like that, it's really awesome and you can use it. Keep in mind, on the individual objects, you can still find the stylized point light group and adjust it from inside the object as well. And in the pro version, you have this enable custom light button, which if you click it, you can then adjust the light individually for a specific object. And if you decide to go back on your decision, just disable it and it'll go back to normal. Also in the pro version, if you want to have another group of lights with different properties, you have three light groups here that you can use. So just select whatever objects you want to have it, and then just click add effect. And you'll notice if we move it around, we now have this green light, which obviously you can switch to whatever color you want. I'm going to increase the power of the light once again. Generally, you want the power to be a bit high, because if it's too low, the light might look weird or the color might not show up properly. Sometimes if you don't see your color showing up enough, you may have to just increase the brightness or the power of the point light. So yeah, just play around with it if it's not working properly. So you can see just like that, now we have a totally new lighting group, which is is this green one. And of course, if we duplicate it around, we can move it wherever we want to. So you can see in our object outliner now, everything that's number two is going to be that green light that we made, and number one will be that orange light that we made. And yeah, so it's really cool. You can have as many of these as you want. Of course, you can also switch the blend styles to step linear and adjust the step count too. And that'll give you like a really, really stylized look if that's something you're interested in. Do keep in mind, guys, one limitation of this is, of course, these point lights kind of affect the stylized light dynamic effect as well at the same time, which is why not all of the lighting is going to be completely green until you move it closer. So just keep that in mind. Which is why in the anime style, for example, using stylized point lights can be a little bit wonky sometimes. But don't worry, because that's what the stylized 3D light per object effect is for, which I go over in the previous video. Same for painterly style as well. It's just that it's a little less accurate and it's more geometry based. By the way, if you guys ever encounter an issue where you rotate your object and the lighting gets messed up, for some reason it's actually the auto painterly effect that causes this. To fix this, you just hit Ctrl A, apply all transforms, and you can see now uh, everything is working again. You might notice our origin went to the world, so if we try to scale it, it's not in the center of the object. So just go to objects at origin, origin to geometry, and now it's okay. And yeah, since you're still using the add-on, you know, you guys can always use all these features still, which is just what makes this add-on so great. Also guys, remember, you can bake this to a texture, so if I go to the Bake Your Shaders tab, I'll just name this something random. I'll use 1024 and bake it. And you can see that's now baked to a texture on our model right here. And that gives you the image texture. So yeah, that's just an option you guys have if you want. All right guys, so now let's practice lighting this slump of leaves that I made. Pretty much it's just a green base color with lighting and then some hue saturation value effects that I used to draw some leaf veins on it. Just like this, nothing too crazy. To start out with, I'll enable the painterly effect on this stylized light dynamic effect. You'll notice it's very weak, so you might have to play around with the settings a bit until you get it to actually work. So just keep that in mind. I'll set the color to something a bit dark because we want to have bright lights on this object. Now I'll select all the objects I want and just add a stylized point light to it. And now you can see already we can just increase the power and move around our light. Do keep in mind though the painterly effect can mess up the lighting a bit. So you can see here the lighting has gotten like quite distorted. By the way guys I forgot to mention this but I did disable the cast shadow feature on this light. So play around with that and see whether or not it looks better with or without cast shadow. Okay anyways so what I'm going to do is try and lower the strength of the painterly effect just so that the lighting is a bit more regular and normal. Later we'll talk about another lighting method with circular light where we can kind of bypass this issue. 
But for now, let's just do this. I'll tint the shadow to blue as well so that this looks a bit more appealing. Because we have orange light going on to it, so blue shadows would just be a cool contrast. You can try adding ambient occlusion as well if you want to add even more detail to your model. So that's another option you guys have. Now let's add yet another stylized point light group, but this time we want to make it like a blue light. So I'll position this new light on the left side, set it to blue, and just increase the brightness a lot. You can see it looks pretty cool. And yeah, now we have a blue rim light. And of course, as usual, if you want, you can enable custom light on a specific object just to tweak it if you want to. Let's add an object outline as well. And then the outline texturing, I'm just going to set it to the crayon.02 texture that comes with the stylized textures pack. And I'm just going to enable the strength a lot. Let's increase the thickness as well. You can see it looks pretty cool. So let's just select all the objects. Shift select the one that we added it to, Control L link materials, and then Control L copy modifiers. Hit tab to go into edit mode, and then assign everything to our actual material we had before. And yeah, you can see now all of them have this outline. Alright guys, I want to switch gears and talk about what this Occlude from Dark Areas feature does. Basically what this Occlude from Dark Areas feature is for is so that your light doesn't occlude the detail of your model, so it doesn't like overlap anything. You basically just increase the Dark Areas one and then decrease the Sharpen Brain Areas one, and you can basically just clamp the lighting so that it doesn't interfere with any of the details that you drew on your model. Alright guys, so now let's talk about using colored circular lighting instead of the stylized point light group lighting. So I'm just going to delete those for now, and I'll delete the point lights as well. So now we can go back to our Painterly effect, and using circular lighting, we're going to be able to actually not have that issue where the lighting gets a little too messed up by the Painterly effect. So when you're ready, just select all your objects and add a colored circular light. And you can see now it gives us it's empty. You can basically just scale it up a lot. You can see already it's pretty powerful. Just set the color to whatever you want, and you can increase the value of the color. And what that's going to do is going to make it a lot brighter. I'm also going to add a strength slider under that, so you guys might see that there as well. You can play around with it. Once again, you have your increase and decrease dark and bright areas thing like we had on the stylized point lights. And so I'm going to add yet another colored circle for the light. This time, of course, on the left, I want it to be a blue color. So I'll just set it like this really easily. And yeah, now we have a nice rim light on the side. Now you can see here, the detail we drew on our model is kind of getting occluded by the circular light. So what I want to do is just play around with these settings to try and clamp it properly. And by the way, guys, I ended up switching the name here to occlude from dark areas, just like it was on the stylized point light for consistency's sake. So you can see now using circular lighting instead, we can have a stronger painterly effect on our model without it affecting the lighting, which is pretty cool. All right, guys, so that's it for this video. And if you're someone trying to learn Blender and maybe make high quality stylized art, check out my masterclass on ukiobros.io. This is a comprehensive program where you can learn at your own pace and basically seal all my secrets that I've learned over many years. Anyways, thank you so much for watching.